Let me talk to you about sustaining in subsistence marketplaces. One of the key things to keep in mind is that in subsistence marketplaces, people live their environment. If they throw plastic out in the street, it's going to block their own sewage and that means they get diseases. It is not a setting where you can just pull up the windows of your car and drive away to a safer environment. So people live their environment. This is true in a rural setting and it's true in an urban setting. People live very close to the fields and so on and this is what gives them the food. And so it's very important to take care of their own environment. Now, how does this play out? Well, there is the immediate environment, the immediate distance, so to speak. There is the local distance, there is the societal distance, and the global distance. So the immediate environment is one like inside a home where people have just a little bit of control. They can't control the noise, but at least it's their home. And maybe they can put up some cloth to filter the dust and so on and keep out the sound. And the local distance is something they have very little control over. It all depends how people maintain the communities, whether the government neglects it and so on. And so whether it's pollution or garbage and all of those things, people have very little control over it. At the societal level, there are lots of things happening. It could be construction, it could be you know, changes in a variety of different ways that affect people's lives. Again, they have very little control over this as well. And then finally, at a global level, people talk about things like global warming and climate change. They've heard about it. They're trying to comprehend what all of this means as well. So these are the kinds of distances that people deal with. And it really creates this irony that here I am in a resource-rich setting, and I do have control over a number of things, but I could very well be quite indifferent to environmental issues. On the other hand, there are people who live the environment, they really care about it, but they have very little control as well. So our approach has been to really try to understand what people are sustaining from the bottom up. Now, of course, the UN definition of sustainability is very important. It's very important to talk about the economic, the environmental, uh, and the social. It's very important to talk about people, planet, and profit. But that's from the top down. What are people trying to sustain bottom up is something that we take as very important. Is it culture? Is it language? Is it livelihood? So we have tried to unpack what people are sustaining bottom up. And one way to think about it is that people want to survive in a very physiological sense. People want to relate to others and to their own environment. This is very important because relating to others sustains people. And then people want to grow, if not for themselves, at least for the next generation. At least the next generation should not suffer the way they have. And so this is the way we think about sustainability from the bottom up. Now, there is this very famous hierarchy of needs model, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs model. And it's very interesting to look at this and juxtapose it against what we see in terms of surviving, relating, and growing. The first thing I'll say is what's at the top of this hierarchy of needs, self-actualization. That is a luxury. I have it, I'm very fortunate to have it. But for people who are surviving and running enterprises, that's a luxury. They are doing what they can to survive. They're doing what they can to make ends meet. Next, I wanted to point out that if you look at this hierarchy, right at the bottom are very basic physiological needs and higher up are self-esteem needs. But sometimes it is self-esteem that helps people to sustain even when they have to starve. So if you take away their self-esteem, you leave very little else. One of the ways in which non-collateral loans are enforced in these settings is by humiliating people, calling them expletives in public and taking away the one thing they still have, which is their dignity. And it's their dignity that helps them to sustain through unimaginable challenges. 